Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Natter with Maka uh, episode. And uh, today I have the great pleasure of introducing to you Kate Denning. So Kate is the owner of the Rendezvous Spiritual Tea House, which used to be called the Rendezvous Tea Room in Woongabba. She's an author, she's a clairvoyant, psychic, spiritual teacher and mentor and has a wealth of knowledge and experience within the spiritual realm. Kate believes in the power of manifesting, which I love, uh, positive energy and personal healing and thoughts become reality. Welcome, Kate. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> it's lovely to have you. So tell us a little bit about how did your life experience lead you into this career? Well, I used to do, um, I was in real estate, in sales, and um, back in 2010, I got really sick with Crohn's, and I ended up in hospital and spent most of 2010 in hospital. Nearly died, um, I dropped down to 43 kilos, I had a heart attack, a stroke, a perforated oh. bowel, I had a bag for six months. I was in a wheelchair for a while because I just wasn't strong enough to walk. And it totally turned my life upside down. Um, yeah, so I, going back to 2009, really struggling in my relationship. And um, anyway, from being in hospital and it, like I said, like it turned our life upside down. And it was, it was actually a really good thing. You know, it was a blessing in disguise because I was doing things. I was a heavy drinker and smoker and totally stopped that. And I remember getting a CD um, on meditation that I bought at a um, psychic fair and I've always been into this because I saw, saw my stall go, saw my first ghost when I was like 14 years old. And, you know, it was a pretty scary experience with old family. We lived in a haunted house. <laughs> and, you know, so I've always had an interest in this, in this realm and had been doing readings and learning about it and doing courses along the way. But after getting sick and not being able to really get out of bed, I started meditating and because I was actually sent home because they couldn't do anything else for me. So I was pretty much sent home to die. And I decided that um, I wanted to live. And anyway, I started doing meditation. Meditation is perfect. It is the best medication out there. It heals the body. It helps you relax. Um, there's just so many benefits when it comes to um, medica uh, med meditation. He's me saying med med <laughs> meditation, getting my, t my tongue twisted there. <laughs> and, and slowly over the year, like in 2011, I, um, I got better and better. The tablets that I was on nearly killed me. So I went off those in 2012. I had been put on a disability pension and told that I would never work again. And um, I went off that, I think, in 2013. So since then, like, I've just had so much, so much happen. And because I just had this faith, I just knew that I would be fine and I would get through this. I have. And I am in such a better place now. You know, it's just amazing to think that I nearly died then. Um, my marriage was on the rocks. And now we are in the best place that we've ever been in our life. And last year was, was great. You know, I don't have much money, but I believe in the power of um, positive thinking, manifestation. And last year I created for myself um, my gypsy wagon, which I've always wanted. So I travel around in my gypsy wagon doing my readings, psychic parties. And then in March I um, published my book, The A to Z of Tea Leaf Reading by Kate Denning. Oh, wow. 
and I ran my very first workshop from the Rendezvous Tea Room back in um, 2013. So that's sort of how that came about. I actually, I'm not, I wasn't a writer and I didn't even realise until one day I was putting my notes together. I had all my notes together and it's like, oh my God, I've got a book here. So yeah, I published that last year. So that's doing quite well. And I did have to change the name of the tea room. So it's now the Destiny Tea Room. Oh, sorry. I and, didn't know that. Oh, no, no. That's that's right. I thought it just, yeah, so it's under the Destiny Tea Room. And um, so I got that, um, my friend and my mentor, who I actually wrote about in this book, and I interviewed him for my book. I'm just seeing if I've got a, I've got a picture of him, um, the two of us in there. So... Down a little bit. Hold it down, hold it down. Yep. Can you see that? Yeah, perfect. So this is myself and Luke Quadrelli, and that was only back in um, 2018. So my book came out in March, and then um, sadly Luke passed away in May. And it was his shop and it was closed down, so I reopened it in, in honour of him. And I still believe everything will work out really well there, even with what's happening at the moment. Um, I have had to close the tea room because of the coronavirus, but um, the landlords dropped the rent down and um, then we're getting the help with the government. So, yeah, I wasn't worried at all. I'm at home enjoying things <laughs> and putting new, new workshops together and um, writing another book. Wow, that's beautiful. So was that a daunting, uh, you know, what kind of hurdles did you have to overcome before you started the tea room? You know, like what, give some people an idea who may want to start their own business and they just don't know, you know, they've got that doubt, that voice in their head going, oh, you couldn't do that. Tell us a little bit about how <laughs> they may overcome that. Oh. What did you do? What did I do? Do you, do you know what? I don't overanalyze things. I just get out there and I do it. I, my poor husband, I scare the life out of him sometimes. <laughs> you know, I go and sign up for a shop and he's like, what? <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's all, I just, it just comes to in my path. So I, with being like knowing everything happens for a reason if it comes into my path, um, I'll follow it and see where it leads. So I don't um an hour about things. I just jump in there and I do it. And then I think about it later. Perfect. <laughs> you know, okay. like when you're, supposed to, when you're building up a business and you're supposed to look at your demographics and see if it's worthwhile doing it from that area, um, yeah, I jump in there first because I've got that trust and that faith. <laughs> yeah, when I was working in real estate and I take people to show show them houses and the people in the office would be saying, Oh, you know, you need you you need to push the place on them, you know, you've got to do the sales and I'm like, you take you find out what people want and and you deliver and you really don't have to sell. Like if you know what it is people people want that's what you work with it and you find that for them and and the sales all falls into place anyway and I think that just goes with with anything like if you're going with the flow and you trust and you have faith that things will happen it just it it's pretty easy I know some other people might think oh my god it's just so hard I couldn't do that um, but if you just look out for those signs and follow those signs your guides are leading you and everything should be fine yes there are hurdles that that come up but i think because i've got that positive attitude and i know things are going to turn out the way they sh they they're meant to um even with the things that um can be negative um i still can deal with them quite well 
you know i just i just go with the flow if that if that makes sense it does and it, it's, <laughs> i guess it's your gut feel right so you get got to get mm. out of your head and go with your gut which is what yep. you know is the truth and i think now like with what's happening now it's a great opportunity for everyone to sort of stop and think about what it is they really want in their life you know, what's their passion? You know, they really don't have to be working for someone that they don't like, a job where they're stressing out and they're getting sick, which is what happened to me, working in an area that I didn't like. Um, you know, it nearly killed me. So this is a time for you to start thinking about what it is you truly want in your life. And I think as we're getting older, because I just noticed, um, I saw on your post, I just had a quick look on your Facebook page that you've just turned 50. Yes, Yay. I have. <laughs> I only so, had one meltdown so about that. <laughs> I'm 55. On my 50th, I went on my very first cruise. Oh, my God, it was awesome. Absolutely yeah. awesome. But I'm loving getting older. Um, I find things are much easier now and... I don't hold back in, in the way I feel too. I speak my truth. Um, and That's really, do you find, Kate, that being able to speak your truth is really is a, uh, that sign of maturity? Because I think when we're younger, we're, you know, we're, I know a lot of people that were told to, you know, when they're kids, be quiet, don't talk you know, um, and then for some people that's really restricted them. <coughs> Whereas when we start speaking our truth, but doing it in a way that's kind and, um, you know, and not offensive, then I think, mm. you know, you're going to lead a better life anyway. Yeah. And if you do need to say something to someone and they're upsetting you about whatever, Say it in a loving way. Don't say it at that moment where things are heated because you can't take back what you say. So if you can actually bring it up in a loving way, then things will turn out hopefully, well, most of the time for the better anyway. But And I think like doing meditation and being positive um, and knowing everything's going to be okay, that helps me a lot there too. And my husband, he's a pretty calm person. You know, he's a Cancerian and he's just, he's the homebody. He'd love to be at home doing what I do. <laughs> yeah. But he's a, he's a sensible one. He's the one out there with the full-time job, keeping the roof over our head. <laughs> so how did you know that you could read tea leaves? How does that happen? And is your book around, oh. is, is your book uh, teaching people how to read their own leaves? Or yes. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah. So... The book, The A to Z of Tea Leaf Reading, is from the beginning and it shows you how to prepare for it and how to read the tea leaves and what the symbols mean. Now, it's not just about tea leaf reading either. It's like crystal balls. You remember as a child looking up into the clouds and seeing pictures in the clouds. Mm -hmm. well, I still do it. I still do yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can get my book and you can see what that means. But let's say you see a dog in the clouds. Yes. Okay. That is saying that you are a loyal friend and oh. there's also help for you there financially. Now, it can also be um, a dog that um, is either now living or passed away that's coming to you to send love. Oh, now, I like I that. I did one this morning. Now, I've got this beautiful teacup and um, it's got all the symbols inside and it's a bit dry, so it's going to fall apart a bit. Yeah. But if you have a look here, you can see um, what looks like a lady here and a rose. Yes. And you can see the head and you can see the bun. Well, her, sorry, her clothes are falling off on my hands now. <laughs> um, but I've got a picture up on my page and the lady that was, I, I did a live show and she said, can you see if my Nana Rose will come through? <gasps> well, that's like the best pitch, one of the best pictures I've ever had come through. You had the rose as a symbol in the teacup and had the lady standing beside it. So that was her Nana coming through. And like even crystal balls, you can see things in the crystal ball because it's got these inclusions like the cracks 
and they turn into pictures. So it's my way of doing mediumship too. So Nana Rose came through very clearly this morning. It was just amazing. Yeah. So I've got in here, um, you know, different readings that I've done. Um, this one here, I don't know if you can, I've got that up there. You can see the horse's head just there. Yes. And then it looks like these guys are cheering, doing like a high five. Yes. And then there were all Egyptian symbols in the cup in the, um, like in the dust, dust particles in the tea and there was an Egyptian vote in there and and I asked him um, if he was going to Egypt and he said to me no he said but um, there's a horse called Egyptian symbol and that horse was running in two weeks time and came first so we've had like three wins a second and a dead last with him we picked Winx the very first time Winx won so I don't know if you know Winx with a okay. cox plate like four four times Yes. Yeah. So his grandfather was a horse trainer and his grandfather comes through and gives him the tips. I just give him the symbols that I'm seeing and then he works it out and he'll tell me which horse to back. <laughs> so we've had Winx and Mischievous and Egyptian symbol. Um, I forget the one that came last, but anyway, <laughs> came dead last. Poor thing. Can't get them all. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, and the very first time, like, when I learned how to do it, I was actually on holidays up in Noosa and I was still recovering because some days I couldn't even get out of bed because I had chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia as well. And I might be out of bed for half an hour and I'd be vomiting a lot and just no stanima whatsoever. And, yeah, we went out and I was working with my guides and I had a cup of tea and I thought I'd have a bit of a play with it. And I was just fascinated by what I could see in the cup. So I've already shown you some stuff, but I could see a horse. I could see a guy that looked like Elvis Presley, another one that looked like a guy singing in a chair, playing a guitar. And all of the stuff that I saw in the cup happened that day. So that was it. I was hooked. And then yeah. I had to go and meet this guy, Luke Quadrilli, that I'd been hearing about. And, and he taught me a lot more. Yeah. That is amazing. I love it. I've got massive <laughs> goosebumps before when you were talking. So I love that. Love it. And, you know, I love horses. So when you mention horses, that's exciting because I wanted to be a jockey when I was a kid. And uh, I had an amazing fascination for them. And um, yeah, I always see pictures in the clouds. I often see the dog. So I think that's my Rottweiler that passed a while ago. Yep. Um, so coming to say hello. So I, that makes me really super excited. <laughs> yeah, they will find a way to, to leave you messages to let you know that they're around. Like even when you're looking at the tiles on the floor, you can see pictures on the tiles on the floor and, um, yeah, in sandstone, wherever. Like, I get messages everywhere. Like, once you're open to it, mm -hmm. you will see these signs everywhere. And it's, it's like your guides or your ancestors have got your attention now and they know that you're seeing all of this. So they love to, um, to play with it to pass messages on to you. Yeah, so my mm. partner is a plasterer by trade and once a week or every job I go out and I help him sand the house when he uh, when he finishes it. And uh, the other week we were at a house and we d all I saw were these love hearts everywhere on the floor, you know, and I said, oh, look what he's done. He's left all of these love hearts for me, you know, and I took photos of them and people were like, do you like just go looking for them? And I went, no, they just, they just happen, you know. So <laughs> I, I find random hearts in the... In, in what in wildlife you know like in, at leaves or things like that or um so i i love that that's why i always feel that's a little sign for me too from above oh definitely definitely and and that's that's your love for your love for life too so it's um your way your guide's way your ancestors way of tell you know passing on those messages and giving you that love and that support so you've got, yeah, a whole lot of people backing you up there. Oh, I love it. So, Kate, share with us a song in uh, that 
either represent you as a person or it may um, uh, in, like uh, give you an energetic lift? What's a song that you just sort of go, that's my go-to when I need a bit of a lift? Oh, okay. I, I've got a beautiful story to tell you about um, a song. I there's there's a book that I read and I've got a page called Magical Blessings and I put things up there for people um, to follow and E Squared by Pam Grout and it's about okay. um, changing the way you think. She is just brilliant. I recommend it to everybody. Anyway, there in one of the books, I think it's in E Cubed, she's got seven different songs in there to play. One of my favourites is um, Black Eyed Pea. Um, tonight's mm -hmm. going to be a great night. Mm -hmm. But there's one in there and it's Will, uh, Willie Armstrong. You know, it's a beautiful world. Yes, Louis Armstrong. And, yep, and I would play that one. I actually had like these seven songs recorded and it's really good to play them in the morning because they lift you up. They raise your vibration. So if you can start the day off feeling really good, um, it just sets the day for you. And magical things happen. They really do. Mm -hmm. And anyway, this one particular song, I've got a lady that comes in to have a reading. And her husband had cancer and dementia really bad. He could not even find his way to the bedroom in the end. Anyway, they decided to have a family um, get together and a cruise and they went on a cruise, this, all the family, and they paid for it for everyone to go along to say goodbye to him before he actually passed. And they had the karaoke there and he sung this song word for word. He knew the whole thing and he even had that, that voice, you know, um, that raspy sexy voice the way he sung it and anyway when she was here um, her friend was looking after her husband and brought him back and she got her husband to get out of the car and sing this song to me it was the most amazing thing that I heard. Now, he actually won the karaoke on the cruise. <laughs> he <laughs> sung it word for word. I had shivers going down my body, through my body, yet he could not find his way to the bedroom. Amazing. But he could remember. So songs are amazing because they store in the back of our, back of our brain and it's like the area for like all the old memories. So music is such a special thing. And yeah, so I'd have to say that was my most memorable moment when it came to like the music. Oh, I love John Bon Jovi. I went and saw him in concert. <laughs> He's, he'd have to be my favourite. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Kate, uh, now people can find you on the spiritual realm.com.au they can find you on facebook yep. what's your facebook um the best one uh, the yep. spiritual realm with kate denning right perfect and are you still doing your thursday lives i did that this morning and yep. tomorrow night at 6 30 i'll do a live on the spiritual realm with kate denning and i do uh free readings there and just talk about anything spiritual wonderful and uh, during this lockdown time, can you still do a tea leaf reading on Zoom or something like that? Yeah, well, that's what I was doing this morning. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah, I did that live on um, on Facebook. And, yeah, so it doesn't matter if you're here with me face to face or, you know, we do like a Zoom call or um, phone readings. Yeah, I can do, I can do that. I've also got a um, – I just – Put a did an article for a magazine, Magic Magazine. So I got that off last night and put some pictures in there of um, different readings that I had done and not just with the tea leaves, but like even paint peeling. You know, I have on my stairs, I've got um, the phoenix, um, which is like rising above everything, mm -hmm. which is just perfect. You know, so I'm not worried about um, the coronavirus at all. 
No. I think I think we are actually coming to a time of big change and it's very exciting and it's it's going to be good for us. I agree with you. Well, Kate, it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you. Uh, I can't wait to meet you in real life and give you a hug when all this is over because I just know... Oh, I'm yes, I love my hugs. I miss yeah. my hugs. <laughs> I can feel it. I can feel it. Do you know, like going out and like the last week or two... Um, and I hug everyone and you've got to stand back now and you feel slightly insulted. It's really, it's difficult. It is. It is. It's, mm. it's a new, it's a new, new world at the moment. And hopefully, like you said, that we are, I think, truly believe we're, we're coming through something and, um, you know, greater things are there to happen. And I think, you know, um, you know, my partner and I, we've both been very calm about this and, and I think the people got to stop watching the news and just, you know, just educate themselves a little bit, but, you know, not get caught up in it. Yeah, definitely. I've stopped watching the news, but I was told too that I might not be allowed to visit my grandchildren. So I actually have to get on and find out what the rules are. Yes. Well, probably for your safety more than anything to, um, yeah. So get on FaceTime or something like that. That's what I've been doing to my son. So <laughs> it's a good fun. <laughs> yep. Well, Kate, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. And Thank uh, you. I look forward to meeting you in person. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed this. Wonderful.